Welcome, Councilor Chang. We're about to get started. I will call the Board of Finance to order on Monday, January 22nd at 4.52 p.m. First item on the agenda is the agenda. Welcome, uh, motion to adopt it. To adopt the agenda. Thank you, Councilor Barlow, seconded by Councilor McGee. Discussion of the agenda. Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries unanimously. Yeah. Uh, that brings us to the public forum. Is there anyone that is here to speak to the Board of Finance in the public forum? Go ahead. I would just mention, uh, I don't know exactly what's on your agenda, but, but there's a new report about TIF financing from the state auditor. And uh, I haven't reviewed it with any care, just read the news coverage of it. I saw that um, Maroy thought you said it was bogus, I think, or the park said it was bogus, maybe not all of it. But uh, it does concern me that there was a previous report from the auditor that was critical of the city's handling of uh, its tip accounting. And, and now here's another one, which is a pattern that I've seen with auditor's reports as well, whereby an auditor's report calls attention to some deficiencies. And then the next year, the auditor's report calls attention to the same deficiency again. So that's my concern. I don't know if I can address it or not, but I just want to put that out there. I appreciate it, Michael. Probably don't have time to fully address it tonight. I will say the auditor's reports this time and the reason for my reaction is are about entirely different issues. <laughs> What was raised last time and issues in the deal um, had an opportunity to raise previously and chose not to. So, um, in fact, it does note that um, there was a market improvement of the city performance on the issues that he had raised with previous uh, Well, I, I do expect that at some point the council on the board will be, uh, we have communicated with the council and that, that issue will come up further. Um, is there anyone else in the room that would like to speak to? And, and Michael, I just, this isn't normally a time for back and forth. I'm happy if you want to have your cafe or something. I'm happy to speak. Great, thanks. Uh, looking online, I don't think anyone else can really want to speak. Is there anyone else online that is scanner of this? It looks like Sharon Bush. Sharon, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm speaking about something that you're going to be dealing with, but it's not necessarily on your agenda. Um, and I'm talking about your proposed city tax increase. And I know that everyone's aware of this, that, it, that are watchdogging this, is that the cumulative impact of schools and cities is devastating for the average person. I realize we are not responsible for the schools, but nor are we blind with the impact that the CLA plays in their request and how that's going to translate for property owners. And I wanted to just point out, make sure that everybody understands that as taxes go up, this plays a big factor in the affordability, affordability of housing, whether rental or owner occupied. And I really feel that to have both the city and schools coming forward with increases, especially the impact from the schools. Um, I'm just fearful that both will go down. And I don't even know if I can afford to say yes to these. Um, so I need to give you all a heads up that um, I don't know the answer, but I do know that there isn't unlimited funds from the people that live in Burlington. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. We will be having an extensive discussion of that with the full council later tonight. Um, is there anything else who wishes to be recognized online? If not here, so so I'm going to close the public forum, and we will now move to the consent agenda. I would welcome a motion to adopt the consent. Okay. So, second. Not the consent agenda, as indicated. And is there any further discussion 
Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. This brings us to um, item number four, which is a presentation regarding grant support. Uh, welcome, Paul. Thank you. Um, I'll just say, um, as you will recall, um, about a year and a half ago, um, we created um, a very small two person team um, grants function in the CT office. And that was um, in large part to respond to what we were seeing in terms of um, grant, large federal grant opportunities um, in the wake of COVID and recovery. Um, and since especially this is a new function, um, we wanna report out to you on a regular basis about what we're doing and how we're doing. And so um, I asked Nicole to do that. And so take it away, thank you. All right, I will jump right in. Um, First, we just wanted to summarize kind of uh, efforts over 2023. Um, it was a big year for our team. The, the biggest award was through the RAISE program, which was a Department of Transportation award to connect Bank and Cherry Streets. It will also approve the entire street, but also, most importantly, uh, get Pine and St. Paul to reconnect those two streets. Uh, part of that effort was a downtown workforce development component, and so part of that grant will go to support that work. We also received an award for Champlain Street Park uh, and Neighborhood Equity Index, which was part of a larger grant that included a Main Street traffic safety pilot. We received a small grant to do some window work at Fire Station 1 from the state. Uh, another small grant to do some planning work related to the South End Innovation District's neighborhood planning. And here we have an uh, opportunity through the Regional Planning Commission to uh, advance transportation planning activities. And so we received about 380,000 from the Regional Planning Commission this past year that went towards several different departments. Uh, we thought it would be helpful to kind of show how this work is supporting the overall project cost. And as we're thinking about where some of the challenges and opportunities are lying in the coming years it's looking at where grant opportunities exist and where we've been successful um could be useful information so this just shows the numbers will be a little bit different than what you saw in the recent grant awards because this is trying to capture larger project costs for some of these so reconnecting bank and cherry is much more than the grant award that we received we do have another grant that adds on to that but this is a very very large project you know, close to 36 million and the local contribution is just 3 million. So it's only 8% of the overall project cost. Similarly with workforce development, things like the neighborhood equity index, uh, traffic safety, um, transportation related initiatives, I'll say have a fairly low local share, not really above 20%, sometimes down to zero. Where we're really struggling are things like uh, Facilities, so the fire station windows. You know, we managed to get a small twenty thousand dollar grant. Facilities is still deciding if they're just going to reduce the scope of that project and do it in phases, or just try to pitch in more local money to get the whole thing done. Um, Champlain Street Park is another one, trying to pull all kinds of funding sources to get that one done. Uh, the next slide kind of highlights. Uh, oh, sorry, one other pending announcement. Uh, we do have two awards that. One we should hear in February, Railyard Enterprise Project, which also included a workforce development initiative. We requested uh, just over 26 million. It would be another zero match opportunity if we receive that award. Um, so we're just keeping tight, hopeful that we will get that one also. And we have an active grant with the Agency of Transportation for a Lake Street shared use path. It's a very, very small section, just filling a gap in our network across the railroad. But because of the railroad crossing, it really complicates the design. And so we put in an initial request to the state for some additional funding to make the rail improvements that the rail owners are working on. Um, kind of tying back to some of the opportunities and challenges with the grant programs and where the funding seems to be lying. Um, 
the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and the Inflation Reduction Act, those funding programs are generally still continuing. Most of those are five-year programs. Um, there are some new programs that the IRA uh, kind of created, but other ones, it's just stacking funding into the programs that it created. And so it creates some interesting opportunities to kind of collaborate and cross sectors. Um, general focus areas for those opportunities seem to be surface transportation improvements, workforce development, equity, energy, and regional economic development. Um, we do also have congressionally directed spending again, so those opportunities cycle through every year now. Um, we've had a bit of success trying to sort of play matchmaker between different departments to get some of the collective efforts done. It's harder to find standalone opportunities at times, but if we can join different uh, projects together, we're having some success there. And one thing that's been more difficult to quantify is just how the grants team's contributions to uh, grant writing is freeing up project managers time to actually get some of these projects done. But we just wanted to highlight that that's um, definitely an opportunity. It's something that we hear often from other departments as being very helpful. We just have not uh, you know, been able to capture what that really looks like. Some of our challenges that we're seeing is that we do have a lot of needs for things like fleet and facilities and public health. There are very few funding opportunities for those, especially at the federal level. Um, and we have a very limited local match remaining for capital construction projects. And so we're having some very difficult conversations about how do we prioritize all of our big projects and all of our needs and see how we can still get things done. Um, as we're looking ahead, the areas that are probably our targets and priorities. Uh, we have Champlain Parkway Phase 2. Um, just had a little asterisk on this one that we're not seeking grant funding, but we're just acknowledging that this one requires a significant amount of capital for local match. And so it's just always on our minds that that one is going to need a, a pretty heavy lift financially. Real Enterprise Project, as I mentioned, we're waiting for one potential grant award, but we we'll keep applying for grant opportunities for that one. It seems unlikely to be able to do it with just local funding. North Beach Overpass, um, it is the one section of the Waterfront Greenway, the Greenway that has not been reconstructed. Um, we're struggling to find some funding for that one. It's not eligible for federal grants and it is a high dollar amount um, just uh, due to some of the construction requirements. Um, we're taking a slightly different track lately to see if we can negotiate with the state for any changes to their requirements to maybe lower that cost for us. Queen City Park Road Bridge is another one that's a high priority for public works to reconstruct. Um, it is eligible for federal funding. Capacity wise, they're struggling uh, with all of the other transportation projects that they have. And local match wise, we're also struggling because that will require funding that we're not sure if we have funding to match yet. Um, Main Street, Great Streets, we are currently writing a uh, raise grants to try to uh, do more of that project. Um, that will also include a workforce development component. One's due in late February. Uh, the South End Coordinated Redevelopment Projects, we're continuing to talk with CEDO and just stay in the loop on their timeline and look for opportunities there. I think that one will have some good opportunities. Uh, the Gateway Block Memorial is another kind of high priority area. Um, there's a lot of planning work happening now. I think there will be some good opportunities for funding that one. These last three, though, again, are where there are still a lot of needs and where it just are very limited grant opportunities. So fleet facilities, I've highlighted the ones that uh, at least cross my desk as areas of need, and then some of the community kind of activity, whether it's programming, trying to get incubator spaces, like uh, kitchen access, public health needs, housing needs. Uh, these are all ones that we know there are significant needs, but we're really struggling to um, find significant grant opportunities to make progress there. Um, the last slide here is just uh, last year when we submitted, we shared that we were trying to get some information online to make this more publicly available. And so this is just a little snapshot. I know it's hard to see with everything else on the screen here, but our data hub on the city's website now has a little link to um, a summary of our successful grant awards and how that is helping us to leverage our limited local funds. With that, I will stop talking, take any questions, anything else? Any questions? Yes, sir. Thank you. I um I 
appreciate all the work that is going into finding this extra money to do the things that we need to do. Uh, all are painfully aware of the shortfalls that we have, and we'll do things that trying to break the gap. I appreciate that. Uh, I only have one question. Um, it relates to the general focus area for um, some of the federal uh, legislation and uh, the regional economic uh, bank opportunities. I'm curious if that means more of like a county level, like something that was designed at the federal level for county government that we don't really have in Vermont. Um, and if that is something that we're still able to apply for. Yeah, that's a good question. and. Just really need to clarify. It's actually more about um, so thinking of transportation projects as an example. There are several programs that uh, projects would only be eligible if we could make the argument that it has regional importance. So that's that's the regional tie-in. Okay. Most of the grant opportunities. Thank you. There's no further discussion, uh, Councilor Chang. I can't see you right now, so. Are you wishing to be recognized? Um, yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Yes, okay. um, thank you for the presentation. And my first question is the list of the grants that were received. They all come from the same source, right? CC, Chittenden County? Only the projects that were listed as uh, transportation planning. Those come from the Regional Planning Commission. The others, a lot come from the Department of Transportation at the federal level. Um, and then we received a couple of smaller grants from other agencies. Okay. Um, it is just that also, I remember one grant that was not listed and it's coming from the regional uh, planning, which is the re-envisioning of North Avenue. I am not sure why it's not included on this list. The transportation projects that are funded through the Regional Planning Commission, it's such a long list of small projects. We thought it, the text would clutter up the presentation. It is included in there. Happy to provide that list of the projects that are included in their planning program. We just didn't provide that level of detail tonight to just minimize the amount of text in front of everyone. Okay. Um, and also what are, what methodology do you use to prioritize those projects that you shared and not others? The ones that were shared in today's presentation? Yes. Or in, as we are looking for new opportunities. For today's presentation, we highlighted the ones that we were, that the clerk treasurer's office took the lead on or um, helped with and that were successful awards. So that's that should include everything. We did not sort of like pick and choose which uh, grants to show here. Again, the, the Regional Planning Commission ones we're the only one that we grouped in one uh, header of transportation planning. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Chang. Okay. Um, uh, Councilor Grena, uh, I think we have time for one more question, and we do have to do one more item before 5 15. So go ahead. Thanks. Um, I'm curious. I'm sorry. I'm still on the clock. So the, there's a phone ringing. Okay. Someone got it. Great. So I'm curious. Um, I have some grave concerns about our situation with regards to fleet. Um, and are we planning to have a strategy for addressing the issues around fleet? Um, in particular, I have some concerns about the fire department, but I know that this is an issue in departments citywide. I, I find it interesting that like, even if we order, say a fire truck or ambulance, we don't get it for a couple of years and we don't have to pay for it until we get it. So why can't we put in orders? Like, why would the order have to go? on next year's budget. I'm sure there's reasoning for that. I just want to be able to understand it. And as I said before, I want to know that we're going to have um, a plan for fleet because that's becoming a very dire, not becoming, it is a very dire situation. Thank you. 
Um, I'm going to take a, a shot at this, Councillor Grant, because this is not really a grant issue. So I don't think Nicole has a lot of expertise to offer us um, because what she has done is try and look for fleet grants that don't exist, um, unfortunately. Um, but as someone who sits on the fleet committee, um, I can say this is of the utmost importance to that committee. Um, you may recall that we're working with uh, a consulting firm called Move EV, um, and we're actually expecting a draft report from them in the next couple of weeks. So I think by February, that's something we would be sharing with the Board of Finance and City Council. And part of what um, we have hired them to do is to help us come up with a sustainable fleet financing plan. Um, one of the items that you mentioned um, was why can't we order a vehicle because we don't have to pay for it until we get it. Oftentimes we actually have to pay for it in advance. And one of the problems that we have encountered through COVID as a new problem beginning in COVID, it is my understanding, is that a lot of items um, we put on what's called a master lease for financing purposes. And in fact, we start making payments and it can sometimes be up to two years before we even see the piece of equipment. And so that's something we're obviously trying to avoid, making payments on something that has not been received. And so we're working um, with Dave and Lee over in DPW on the fleet team and Darlene in my office to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, but there are larger issues that we will continue to discuss throughout the budget process um, because it's something that you're correctly identifying was an issue last year and it's something we are still um, certainly wrestling with. Um, Mayor, is there anything you would like to add? Um, you know, just that we obviously the, with the fire department in particular, they do have ongoing needs. We also have be more investment in the fire department and fleet vehicles that at any point in the city's recent history done a lot of real investment in new ambulances and fire engines. So we're much better there than we have been historically in a lot of ways. But we have other nights to um, discuss this further. Uh, um, are there any more? I think we need to close out the question and go to the, the last item here. Thank you, Nicole. Appreciate you being here. The um, next uh, and final item is the creation of a wastewater operator position. Welcome, Chapin. Thank you. Uh, I will say a few words, and we have uh, on Zoom uh, Matt Dow and Megan Moyer from Water Resources, as well as. Uh, Tony Sherman from HR, thank you for being here. Um, we are in a situation with our aging plants where uh, we uh, need this extra person to provide a minimal level of staffing. It used to be that our main wastewater plant could survive without a uh, an operator during wet weather storm events. Our plant no longer can uh, reliably operate that way. And, I just want to give a special shout out to Matt and his team for filling in uh, this additional responsibility uh, without to the date having an increase in staff. I've reviewed the recommendation from Raph Tellis, the consultant, and uh, fully support this. It doesn't impact the general fund, it impacts the enterprise fund. It was budgeted this year uh, already, was presented as part of the budget. So Megan and Matt, I probably said too much, but uh, take it away. Um, I mean, just so one thing I can say is that, um, you know, I think probably everybody knows about the um, how important wastewater is for public health, when especially when we end up shutting down beaches. Um, and because of that, or through that and through our aging infrastructure, um, it's, it has turned into a much more labor intensive job. Um, we do have uh, operators who have to stay overnight uh, to run events when it's raining. And uh, where the risk is for us on that is if we have somebody who's here overnight when we only have a staff of four operators, that operator can't be here the next day. So now we're down to three. If somebody's got a vacation or if somebody calls out, 
um, pretty soon you can be down to less than a skeleton get staff. Um, so basically the, the idea is that this position would be able to give us a little bit more ability to, um, to make sure that we can cover the minimums that we have when we need them. Happy to answer any questions. How would you like to proceed? Go ahead, Councilor Reed. Um, I'll just say quickly before I make the motion that safe staffing across all of our essential city services is essential. And, um, I appreciate you all trying to make it work, but having taken a tour of the wastewater treatment, the main plan, I can certainly understand the need to have additional health care and appreciate the work that your team has done to get us to this point. Um, so uh, with that, I have to make the motion is to recommend this. Great, thank you, Councilor McGee. Do we have a second? Second by Councilor Barlow. Discussion? Seeing no hands, we'll go to the vote. I'll jump in the motion, please say aye. 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 I, I did not hear the conversation. Is it okay if I just uh, abstain? I will do that. Um, great. So that passes you, uh, by a vote of uh, four to zero with one abstention. Um, with that, thank you, uh, thank you Jake. Um, we will uh, thank you, Matt and uh, Megan, if you're out there. It's more too. Um, we that concludes our um, all the board of finances board of business for tonight. So without Jackson, I will adjourn the board of finance at 5.15 p.m. Thank <laughs> you.